Well, thanks guys for, uh, for inviting me out here uh, today. There's some familiar faces here in the audience and uh, a, lot of, a lot of new folks as well, so it's great to see everybody here. My topic today, uh, I'm calling it the, the fifth mode, uh, trip and system characteristics of one-way car sharing here in Metro Vancouver. I think one of the reasons why we as transportation planners need to pay attention to car sharing is that it has over the past five years uh, 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 transition from what I would characterize as more of a niche market to something that particularly in larger centers uh, is becoming a major force in the transportation ecology. Here in Metro Vancouver, car to go which is our, our, our predominant op operator here, in one calendar year's time increased its membership from 40,000 members to 84,000, so a more than doubling of membership. And in just a half year's time, from January to July of this year, Metro Vancouver car share fleet increased by 70% from around uh, 1,250 vehicles to around 2,100 vehicles. So this is a, this is a, a, a major growing uh, uh, part of, of our transportation network. And in this way, I would very much posit that car sharing is quickly emerging into what I would characterize as a fifth mode in urban transportation alongside walking, cycling, public transit, and private automobile use. So now I'll go on to uh, discuss Cartago's one-way car share model as it operates here in Vancouver, as it forms the, the basis of, of, this, of this analysis. Cartago provides, uh, uh, provides the, the geolocation uh, information of all of their vehicles in real time. So what we did, we, we, we worked with uh, folks in our office um, to take geo snapshots of the locations of each of those vehicles that are tied to... Uh, tied to a license plate, to analyze the trip patterns and to analyze where they're going. Uh, we could track each individual uh, uh, vehicle where it's located in the network and uh, ended up coming out with uh, some pretty interesting findings. And we took snapshots every hour on the hour uh, over a 24-hour period over six weekdays in, 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 in January. We then supplemented that data uh, with minute-by-minute -minute snapshots to get a, a better understanding of... Uh, of, of how the system was working in the AM peak, PM peak, midday, and evening peak periods. Um, so now on to the exciting results. Back in January 2015, when Cartago had a fleet of 750 vehicles, uh, they supported about 6,400 trips uh, a day uh, in Metro Vancouver. And that, 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 that equals out to about nine trips per vehicle. Our information here pretty clearly shows that uh, usage is, is uh, spiking around typical uh, uh, commuting hours uh, at around 8 o'clock in the morning uh, and again around uh, 5 o'clock and 6 o'clock at night, really showing that there's a, 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 a significant usage uh, likely that's being used for work-related work, work -related, uh, trips. What I think is one of the most interesting observations uh, is that with related to average trip distance. Unlike what perhaps one might expect, Cartago has a significantly lower uh, average trip length than a typical uh, a private vehicle drive trip in, in Vancouver. And in fact, it's much closer uh, to that of a typical bike trip uh, at around 3.8 kilometers. So now, in terms of vehicle availability patterns, as I mentioned, we were able to track the location of these vehicles in, in, in real time. So at 7 o'clock in the morning, we see some pretty significant uh, clumping of vehicles in what I would characterize as high-density inner residential neighborhoods. Here's 10 o'clock in the morning. Those neighborhoods, um, those neighborhoods that essentially uh, uh, held most of those vehicles back at 7 o'clock in the morning, are almost empty of car share vehicles. Where these vehicles are going, they're going to the major employment zones, downtown, Coal Harbor, UBC, near some of the hospitals along Oak Street where pay parking is in effect. And also, grouping near some SkyTrain stations as well, which speaks to the multimodal uses of how the system's actually being used. By 4 p.m., we're seeing far, uh, we're seeing the vehicles starting to uh, disperse quite a bit, uh, more of a, more of a mixture uh, uh, between uh, vehicles being in, in um, residential areas, or these inner city residential areas, and the employment zones. 
And by 7 p.m., we see a hollowing out of, uh, of the employment zones. And I think anybody who is a car -to go system user and who has worked downtown Vancouver can, can understand on an anecdotal level what this means. It's very rare or it's very difficult to find a car to go uh, downtown Vancouver uh, uh, after around 5.30 p.m. It's doable, but it's, uh, they, go, they go very, very quickly. And what ends up happening is that these vehicles go back, they end up floating back to these uh, higher density inner city residential neighborhoods. In the AM peak period, you can see very clearly a, a clustering of these, uh, of these trips, uh, you know, between downtown, central Broadway, and, uh, and on a diagonal. Again, speaking very strongly to this 3.8 kilometer uh, average trip distance, and you can see it very, very clearly here. By the midday period, the trip distances are a little bit longer, but again, they're being still primarily used for these, the, the, these short, short inner city trips. There's also a lot of diagonal usage here, which uh, uh, is a particularly difficult uh, uh, trip to satisfy on transit. It requires a transfer. In the PM peak period, again, a, a, a significant uh, a group of, uh, of uh, trips occurring, uh, again, in the, in the central areas of town, and by evening, we see more of, more of a more of a dispersal back to the um, back to the inner city residential neighborhoods. We also took a look at Seattle, Portland, and Calgary, and I, I'm just going to show you very quickly the results for Calgary. Calgary uh, has 550 car to go vehicles operating uh, uh, in it, and they have a very liberal parking uh, scheme. At four o'clock in the morning. The vehicles in Calgary are fairly, uh, fairly scattered, but you can see that there, are, that there is quite a bit of clumping uh, 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 about two to four kilometers from downtown, uh, with the exception in the industrial area east of, east of the downtown area. But look at this, between four o'clock and 10 o'clock, heavy commuter usage. Almost all of those vehicles that are in the network go downtown. Very, very heavy commute, commute uh, usage patterns here. Why should cities care uh, about, about, about car share services? When you calculate the direct cost savings of uh, car share uh, uh, annual costs and compare that to vehicle ownership annual costs, the, the, the cost differences are pretty stark. Uh, vehicle ownership costs, yearly ownership costs of a Honda Civic, a mid-range vehicle, being about $10,300. And that's very high. It certainly surprised me when I saw that number. But on a Per person level, we're, we're looking at about $3,800 uh, uh, of, of, of savings on, on an annual basis. And when that's multiplied out over the course of the region, or over the, over the region, this ends up resulting in about 40 to $70 million uh, worth of savings to this region. So in terms of core findings, just to wrap up, Cartago accommodates about 6,400 discrete trips, or at least it did back in January 2015. At, I would say it probably likely accommodates more now. Um, yeah, there's, a, there's a significant traditional peak period usage, and it's pretty clear that it's being used uh, for a lot of work trips. Um, our average trip distance is uh, about 3.8 kilometers. Um, and d d despite uh, a truly extensive service area, the service area goes well into the North Shore, uh, 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 down, to, down to Richmond, the vast majority of those trips are occurring within the central core, uh, as, we've, as we've seen. And finally, uh, as far as economics, car share services result in uh, what we think are pretty liberal savings of 40 to $70 million per year. Um, what we've seen both here in Calgary and in some of the other areas that we've looked at, one-way car share trips seem to be occurring in areas where pay parking policies are in effect, or where parking is limited, and this uh, this this largely uh, uh, you know is a is a disincentive to private automobile travel. Pay parking is. Uh, they seem to be occurring in areas where neighborhood population or employment density is high, which supports a high turnover required for the system's success. They're occurring in neighborhoods that support a variety of land uses, uh, which improves uh, uh, turnover and reduces distances between common destinations. Number four, and I think this is important, and germane particularly for the discussion that we're gonna be having, they tend to be occurring in areas where the public transit network is mature. We have a, we have a lower vehicle ownership rate uh, uh, in, those, in, in those areas, and I think what's often overlooked too is that 
public transit provides uh, provides a fallback alternative. If the vehicle isn't lo if the vehicle isn't there, you know you can always get back from your destination to where to where you need to go on on, on, on transit if you if you need to take that. And finally, and my last point, uh, Cartago seems to thrive in areas where car share vehicles are readily available. And I call this vehicle ubiquity. There is reliability in the car share network when there are a lot of vehicles out there. If I know that I can open my smartphone and I know that you know within a 400 meter radius of me there's going to be two, three cars, it becomes a reliable travel alternative. If there's only 10 or 20 cars in a network, uh, that system simply isn't reliable uh, and isn't an effective alternative for choice users. So I want to thank you guys all for your uh, attention and I'd be more than happy to answer any questions later on. Thank you.